Hey everyone, Steven here from Radolescence and welcome back to another fragrance review. Thank you so much for watching. Today I'm happy to share with you my thoughts on a fragrance by the UK based cosmetics company Lush in association with Gorilla Perfumes and this is a fragrance called Imogen Rose. So here's the bottle. This is a pretty cool presentation, very easy to travel with. Um, this is actually the new presentation. The older bottles were kind of like the uh, short stubby one that you see behind me, the black one with, it almost has like a conal shape. The new one is more cylindrical. This was released in 2010 and the perfumer for this fragrance is Simon Constantine or maybe it's Simone Constantine, I'm not sure. I know that the founders of the company are called Mark and Mo Constantine so I'm only left to assume that Simon or Simone is probably a relative of theirs. Now um, Simon Constantine has done many of the other fragrances in the Lush catalog and he slash she hasn't really exper uh, experimented with anything uh, beyond that. So this fragrance has been around for a while. It's one of their oldest fragrances and uh, this one it also appears in a variety of different mediums. So you can find this scent in a solid perfume, you can find it in um, a, a spray, you can find it in a bar of soap uh, for example. Um, so you can really find it in a variety of different mediums. Now the thing that really sets Lush apart from other competitors like Bath and Body Works, The Body Shop is that Many of their products are, if not all of their products, are handmade. Um, they're usually, they're all, you know, environmentally friendly. They fight to stop animal testing. So that really sets them apart from the rest of the competition. Now, as far as the name of the fragrance goes, Imogen Rose. Imogen actually comes from the old Irish word Inogen, which means maiden or daughter. And it was a name that was first used in a play by William Shakespeare, uh, in which a British princess was called Inogen. Um, so I'm gonna let you know if I think that this rose based fragrance by Lush smells royal or princessy at all. But next up, let's take a look at the presentation for Imogen Rose. Here's the cylindrical box for Imogen Rose. You have Gorilla Perfumes here in the front. Um, nice little artwork here, kind of quirky. You turn it over to the side, there's a sticker that kind of seals it up. They actually uh, package this and put it together for you right when you order it. Um, you open this up, on the inside you will find this paper that uh, the fragrance is wrapped in. Um, other than that, there's really nothing more to the presentation. Um, it's all right, it's cool, but it does leave you know a bit to be desired, but it is a cool fragrance. Um, as far as the bottle goes, here it is, Imogen Rose, really nice uh, design on it. I'm so happy that they did this because before this, all of their fragrances look like this. Just had the little piece of paper, the little flap here in the front. Now they gave each one its own individual unique artwork. So it kind of has like this, uh, it's hard to tell, but it kind of has like the shiny finish to it. Imogen Rose, you have the ingredients in the back, fight animal testing, and uh, all of that stuff. And before it also used to be a little bit thinner. This is my Karma uh, fragrance. So thinner and taller, now shorter, a little bit more cylindrical. But uh, the atomizer actually works really well. Here it is, good distribution and it sprays out uh, enough relative to the concentration. And that was a presentation for Imogen Rose. I'll start off by saying that Imogen Rose is a very special rose. Um, I have Lyric Man by Amouage, Rose 31. I have an Azaro scent that's rose-based. I have an MFK, Lumiere Noir. I have a bunch of rose-based scents in my collection, all of which I actually really, really love. I've been on a rose kick lately. And when I smelled this one in Lush, I had high hopes for it. And it met and exceeded all of my expectations. Now, there's one thing that really allows this fragrance to stand out from its counterparts. And that is, you know, usually when you smell a rose scent, it has a very soft, billowy, gentle nature to it. It's almost evocative of rose petals, uh, very evenly spread out on fresh, clean linens, you know, bed sheet or something like that. When you smell this one, you smell the rose, you smell the thorns, you smell the decaying stem. It's a very aggressive rose and that's because it's not gentle nature, it's rather bold natured and it's very strong in its presence and in, in its appeal. Um, you smell the rose and it's undeniably a fragrance that smells like rose. It really stands out, it's rather jammy and, and leafy and floral to say the least, of course in the most strictest sense, um, but it does have this aggressive side to it. Um, 
it has this dirty vetiver in it which really roughens it up and really brings forth this aggressive nature so the kind of person that I could imagine wearing this is somebody who is bohemian, maybe somebody urban, somebody who doesn't really care, um, but also somebody who's very well aware of the fact that they smell awesome. Um, just somebody who is very confident in themselves, but not necessarily a socialite or a social butterfly, somebody who's always trying to make themselves the life of the party, but rather somebody who's more reserved, more mysterious, but they have a gentle nature to them too. The reason I say that is because this fragrance also contains iris root or iris, and uh, it does kind of have this clean feel to it. The best thing that I can compare it to is ivory soap. So if you can imagine a very jammy, sweet rose sweetened by tonka bean and ambrette seed, and then all of a sudden it has like this clean backbone to it. So it's kind of paradoxical in that sense, but it's a beautiful rose. I mean, and it really stands out. That's why I'm really happy to have this rose in my collection because it's so different from all of the other roses. I mean, you have Lyric Man, which is a very bright citrusy effervescent rose with the lime and the incense in the background kind of adds this relaxing aura to it. Then you have something like Lumiere Noir, which is very spicy to Rose 31, which is kind of powdery, but it has a culinary overtone. This one is just a very raw, aggressive rose, knows what it's capable of doing, isn't afraid to show its face. So for that reason, I'm very happy to have it in my collection, but at the same time, I have to be aware and cognizant of the fact that there might be a lot of people who will not appreciate this fragrance for that very fact, that it is too aggressive, it stands out, um, it doesn't know its place, it, you know, it wants to impose and intrude, and the performance is really good on this one too, so it will make a statement. So thank you for watching, last up we have the rating. First up we have uniqueness and overall smell, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this fragrance an eight out of 10. For somebody who's only ever worked on fragrances for the UK-based uh, company Lush, this is an excellent scent. I mean, I love Dirty, I love Breath of God, I love Karma, um, the fragrance Karma, and now I love this scent, uh, also uh, Sikkim Girl. So they have so many really, really good fragrances for this company, it's one that need uh, shouldn't be overlooked. So please make sure you give this one a try. Great fragrance, very unique, creative, very different rose, really stands out among the others in my collection. The only thing is that I really don't see people you know, uh, giving you compliments when you wear this, especially if you spray too much, but if you do very light sprays, only a few sprays, I think you know it, it does have a certain magnetism to it, but I did over apply one day, I think I did about six or seven sprays, and my fiance just couldn't handle it. So just be be uh, wary when wearing it. Next up we have longevity, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Um, this does last a good six to eight hours, and I have gotten upwards of eight hours on my skin. The only thing is that the rose does become very tame. It's still there, it lingers, but it does become very tame. So just be cautious of that. Um, if you think you're gonna get that same jammy, strong, aggressive rose for the entire duration of the fragrance, um, you won't, unfortunately. Next up, we have projection. I give this one a seven out of 10. Projection is actually very good. Um, my only qualm with this one is I feel like it projects the most in the first hour and a half. Like, it will be, I mean, highly noticeable in the first uh, hour and a half. After that, it just like, it goes from 60 to zero. You know, it starts to sit closer to the skin. Never really disappears. You will still smell it for a while, but I feel like how well it performs in the first hour or two in comparison to how well it performs after that is a very sharp, uh, stark contrast. Um, next up we have versatility. I ended up giving this a six out of 10. I think that as far as the compositional nature goes, this is both a men's and a women's scent. Some people might argue it's more for women, hey, I'm gonna wear whatever I want, I think this one smells amazing, I'm gonna wear it. Um, I think this would work best in the hotter months, just apply lightly. The compositional nature just evokes hotter weather wear. Um, but I do think that a lot of people might wear it in the winter because this isn't a bad performer. Um, I think as far as social occasions go, it's a very romantic scent and it's also very aggressive too, so wear it in the bedroom, you know what I'm implying by that. But I think casually, um, maybe it won't fit all casual scenarios. It doesn't smell too casual, but I, per I suppose one would be able to wear it in a you know higher end scenario, suit and tie, shirt and tie. I just don't think that somebody uh, younger would be able to pull this one off. I think this one really demands you know knowing yourself, being confident in yourself, 
you know, if you're unsure of yourself, I think that this fragrance might give you a little bit of confidence, but I, the person who I imagine wearing this one is somebody who's very confident in themselves, somebody who knows what they're capable of, and, you know, just somebody who is not afraid to, uh, you know, market themselves, put themselves out there. Uh, last up, we have presentation. I told you what I think about that. Uh, for this one, I don't think it's bad, but I think it could be a little bit better. I'm going to end up giving it a 7 out of 10. Overall, I'm going to give this fragrance a 7 out of 10. Now, I'm going to go as far as saying this is one of my favorite rose fragrances in my collection. I think it's a very unique scent, but I'm not going to give it a high score because of that, because I do recognize its flaws. Not everyone is going to like this. There are a few people who will be immediately turned off by it. The presentation does leave a lot to be desired, um, even though it is a nice presentation, nice label and everything, but uh, for that reason, I can't give it a perfect score. I think a 7 out of 10 is a fair score, but hey, as far as personal taste goes, this remains one of my favorite rose scents in my collection. Definitely one worthy of being checked out. So there you have it guys, that was my review on Imogen Rose by Lush or Gorilla Perfumes. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Also please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos and frequent giveaways. So once again everyone, thank you very much for watching. This has been Steven with another fragrance review from Radolescence. See you soon.